as they say in Outcast, this is for the mamas, the babies, mamas, mamas, the mamas, 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 the mamas, mamas. Let me tell you about my mom. My mom was a lineman for the phone company. She was a woman in the late 70s who started climbing telephone poles for Southwestern Telephone. By the 90s, she had joined the line crew, digging ditches to bury cables across the Texas Gulf Coast. When she described her job, she would say she was a lineman. It was 1994 in Texas. Today, we would say that kind of language is sexist and it's best to avoid it in your speech. We would say instead her job was a line person. This language revolution began with the feminist revolution and it's seen a lot of changes in the career field. Let me give you some examples. Now we don't have policemen. We have a police officer. Stewardesses have morphed into flight attendants. Firemen have become firefighters. Chairmen have become chairpeople. And no longer do we call them waitresses, but rather servers. Even your loyal mailman has become a letter carrier. Furthermore, when you're thinking about sexist language or trying to avoid it in your speech, it's not cool to use he for all of your examples that could refer to a male or a female. Instead of just saying he, try saying he or she. Now, despite what you might see on Mad Men, the days of joking about the other sex's weaknesses are long gone for most speakers. Unless you're a professional stand-up comic. Really, we've all heard those sexist jokes. They're not really that funny. And they're also furthering stereotypes. Now, there's one more area of sexist language that I want you to think about. Um, and this is sort of an evolutionary function of language. Sometimes common phrases can become stereotypes. When I was growing up in the 80s and 90s, the phrase, that's so gay, was really popular. And it was a popular slang phrase that people bantered about without any regard for what was then a very insular gay community. With recent progress and equal rights for people of all sexual orientations, the phrase, that's so gay, is now seen as antiquated and alienating. It plays on this stereotype that has long since been proved wrong. And on that note, there have been a lot of landmark legal victories by the LGBT community in recent years, and that's led to another change in language, the ongoing quest for the gender neutral pronoun. Now, a gender neutral pronoun, what am I talking about? He or she would be a pronoun, but what if you choose not to identify by your gender? Well, in the past we might have used it or they. And so in dealing with this kind of language conundrum, the best approach is to find out that person's personal preference for a pronoun. So if you are interviewing a professor who's very active in that community, for example, or an activist, you might ask them, what pronoun do you prefer? The secret to not offending is to learn about your audience and use language in your speech that honors both their values and your own as an ethical speaker.